Okay, uh, I got uh, Peter Beinhart, who I have tremendous respect for as a political observer and a progressive commentator, has a new piece in the Atlantic uh, that is apparently just out because I got a, a, a promotional email from the PR person over at the Atlantic about this, saying, "Hey, you ought to check, you know, have this guy on as a guest or something." But um, and Peter's been on as a guest in the past, but I I, I just want to riff on this a little bit because. Here's Peter's take on this, basically. And as I said, you can read this at The Atlantic. Is that the polls show or politics indicate that Rand, now that Chris Christie has been knocked out of the number one spot in the Republican Party, that it's going to be Rand Paul. And that this could might be like 64, where the dark horse, weird fringe, ultra-conservative candidate, Barry Goldwater, became the party's nominee. And Rand Paul, and, and, and he says the reason for this, in, in large part, in addition to the fact that he's got good you know, polling numbers, is that his dad, well, he makes the point that the Republican Party, uh, with the exception of, of George W. Bush, and arguably, well, I'll, I'll give you the arguable and just say. The Republican Party never nominates somebody to be their candidate who hasn't run four years earlier in the primary. The exception being George W. Bush. But George W. Bush, actually his dad had been president, so his, you know, there was an existing infrastructure for the Bushes. And he says the exact same thing is true of Rand Paul, that basically there's this existing infrastructure within the Republican Party where Ron Paul took, you know, Big, I mean, you know, I, I think when all was said and done and you look back on it, he actually won Iowa and they had jerry rigged it so he didn't. And came in second in New Hampshire right before, right behind Mitt Romney, who lived in the state next door. That Ron Paul was a strong contender of the Republican Party. Rand Paul had that, that, those people have not gone away, those Ron Paul followers. They are now Rand Paul, Paul followers. And they are embedded inside the Republican Party. And so the essence of Peter Beinhardt's piece in, in The Atlantic is that, you know, Rand Paul has a very good shot of becoming the Republican nominee in 2016 for president. And isn't that interesting? I'd like to take it a step beyond that. Rand Paul does hate social security thinks social security should be handed over to the billionaires on wall street should be totally privatized hates medicare medicare should be given to the big insurance companies give it to billionaires like stephen j hemsley and you know let them run it let them make a every everything basically everything the government does except its military and police functions and its judiciary should be turned over to somebody who can make a buck off it now most People don't know that that's Rand Paul's position on pretty much everything. Figure out some way somebody can make a buck off it. But what they do know is that he is opposed to the NSA spying on us. He is opposed to laws that I believe he, he is uh, in, uh, opposed to laws that prevent gays from getting married. Actually, I'm not sure on that. Yeah, gay marriage. He's, he's in favor of gay marriage. He is opposed to laws that, or he's in favor of decriminalizing drugs. All drugs. So when you look at things like, you know, the NSA or drugs or gay marriage, Rand Paul is to the left of the official Democratic Party. Or at least much of the official Democratic Party. Now, you could argue that Barry Goldwater was taking some of these same positions back in 64 when he ran, but nobody really knew about that. Goldwater famously said, you don't have to be straight to shoot straight. He was in favor of gays serving openly in the military. This is in 1964, when being gay was still listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association as a mental illness. I mean, how much times have changed? And yet Barry Goldwater, you know, was holding some of these very kind of semi-libertarian positions. And we had not yet, I mean, Nixon came along after 64. He, you know, it was almost 10 years after, well, six years after that, five, four years after that. 
four years later, Nixon came along. And Nixon's drug law, I think, started in 71, was when Nixon reclassified or recategorized uh, marijuana as a Schedule I drug, and, you know, the whole drug war, war thing started. But anyhow, the, the, the drug war really wasn't going on. I'm guessing if it was, Barry Goldwater would have been taking Rand Paul's positions. But again, people didn't know that. These positions of, you know, don't spy on me, leave people alone in their bedrooms. Now, I, again, I, I, Rand Paul's a bit of a hypocrite here because he is in favor of laws that criminalize abortion. He is anti-abortion. And, and so, you know, I mean, he, it's like catering to the base, right? I, it's, a, it's an inconsistency. It's not a real libertarian position, but he's taking that position. But anyhow, I, m here's my thought on this. That because, you know, if he is a serious candidate and if he actually does take the Republican nomination, this could be the thing that pushes a Democratic nominee way to the left, whether it's Hillary Clinton or whether it's Elizabeth Warren or, you know, whoever it is. And that could be the thing that causes 2016 to be the election where things really start getting populist. I mean, the flip side of Rand Paul, Rand Paul is also all in favor of absolutely free trade, right? No restrictions whatsoever on international trade. A Democrat could take him down by saying, let's go back to protectionism. So I think that a whole bunch of positions that I'm very fond of, I'm a protectionist, and well, you, you know my position on all these other things, I think it's possible that a Rand Paul presidency on the, or not presidency, uh, candidacy, excuse me, on the Republican ticket could be a really powerful force to move the Democratic Party and the Democratic candidate and candidates statewide all over the country. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. And that would be a remarkable outcome if the Democratic Party had to become genuinely progressive in order to take on a, a libertarian Republican.